keeping you up to date with the latest in science fiction on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts and YouTube. It's the news with Matt Miller. Welcome. It's Good Friday, the 2nd of April, 2021. Can you buy me a coffee or sign up for membership for the Trek Zone Anthology Series? All the details at the Trek Zone slash support. Now, let's dive in. Easter Monday marks first contact day. April 5 is the day set in the eighth movie. as the day the Vulcans landed in Montana following Zephram Cochran's warp-powered flight through the solar system after the devastating Third World War. Paramount Plus is planning a party on the day following up their successful Star Trek Day last year. Panels will include Star Trek First Contact's 25th anniversary, creating First Contacts, diving into the visual effects and makeup across the franchise, Women in Motion, looking at how Nichelle Nichols broke new ground on Star Trek and her lasting impact on science and culture. Second Contact will welcome Mike McMahon to talk about how B-plots from episodes in the back catalogue have helped shape future episodes, including his animated series Lower Decks. Kate Mulgrew will also be headlining a panel on Prodigy. Hopefully we get some more juicy bits about the show there. Kicking proceedings off though at 12pm Pacific time, Patrick Stewart and Will Wheaton will be making a special announcement and presentation. Phew, that's a lot of info. But the long and short of it is head to startrek.com slash first contact to watch the panels live and free and lock your comms right onto our Twitter feed for all of our reactions. We'll have all the action for those that can't watch the panels and of course, our opinions. It all begins at 5am Tuesday, Australian Eastern time. Veteran Star Trek illustrator John Eaves has been honoured with a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Art Directors Guild. Eaves began his relationship with Star Trek on the final frontier in 1989, where he went uncredited as a model maker. From there, he moved to DS9's art department as a production illustrator. In addition, he contributed to First Contact, Insurrection and Nemesis. Eves is the father of the Sovereign Class Starship and served as concept artist on Enterprise. He also was one of a few people who followed the franchise into the alternate universe, working as a concept illustrator on 2009, an illustrator on Interdactus, and concept artist for Beyond. He's currently serving a bad robot as concept artist for Discovery and Picard. John Eve's credits list extends beyond Trek 2 with work on Captain America, Pirates of the Caribbean, Spider-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy and Iron Man 3. Those are just some of the ones where he was a concept artist. His prop designing and model making extend to Godzilla, Ant-Man and the Wasp, The Hunt for Red October and Die Hard 2. The Voyager documentary has completed its crowdfunding campaign and takes the crown as the most funded documentary and betters its sibling doco on DS9 by around double. Seven 1,700 new backers joined in the final days of the campaign, spurred on by Nana Visitor and Kate Mulgrew. Trekzone was the first blog and podcast to congratulate the team for crossing the million dollar threshold. What I didn't realise at the time was that due to Indiegogo's automatic conversion to Australian dollars, I was a little bit ahead of the game. But nonetheless, they made it and then some, raising a total of $1,260,245. Well, the only new frames of Axanar you're ever going to see are apparently getting released on Monday. Following six years of no usable principal photography on the short films by Alec Peters and with once staunch supporters like Robert Meyer Burnett, Paul Jenkins and others parting ways due to Alec's alleged inept handling of the short films, including a continued focus on selling merch and getting non, uh, non-profit status as well. Uh, he's also got bootleg space command patches for sale. Well, anyway, the chief apologist for Axanar has done what his mentor and master could not. Actually, make a short film. Production for Jonathan Lane went relatively smoothly and with a lot of hurdles in post, including months of delays, we're almost there, apparently. In the end, Interlude is an outsourced continuation of the outsourced prelude to Axanar, which Alec reportedly had very little to do with, and it will play as such with a much smaller budget and ex- inexperienced cast and crew. Still, at least he actually got in and made something which he said he was going to do. So, kudos to Jonathan Lane. 
Well, let's come back home and say what a week on Trek Zone. Keely was back for the variety show. We're diving into Falcon and the Winter Soldier now. The final mission played out on Judgment Rights. We've got the uncut playthrough on the next Trek Zone plays. Dr. Brad beamed in with details of space junk, space wine, and space launches. Daniel Zaccareo, the founder of Supernova, dropped by to tell us what it's like to organise a convention in this current climate of potential lockdowns and virus spreading. And on the next Talk and Science interviews, Michael Daly is here to talk about the 11th Australian Space Forum. Don't miss a moment of Trek Zone podcasting. We're doing it seven days a week, so you're going to want to follow us on Twitter for the latest. Subscribe and ring the bell here on YouTube to activate notifications and never miss a moment. And uh, if you're listening to us on your favourite podcasting app, click the subscribe button there or the follow button and get those new episodes downloaded to your device so you can catch us on your next commute to work or wherever you catch podcasts. For Trek Zone, I'm Matt Miller. Keep up to date with Twitter. Catch new podcasts daily on YouTube. Plus, we're beaming to your favorite podcast app five days a week. Just search for Trek Zone.